Welcome to Tales from the Caveside, where Lillian and Chris, we bought a cave house and finca on the outskirts of a small Spanish town. Follow us as we learn to renovate and create a home that we will be proud of. Okay, so the continuing saga of the wall we didn't want to take down. This bit here, we took this bit here down. This bit has to come down yet. But it transpires that this little window has been fitted to this brick wall that's not attached at the back. Oh, you can see Spain through that little hole because the window is literally just on this little thin layer of bricks. So, trundling around the world trying to find a window of this small size with clear glass rather than opaque glass. We finally have one. So today the plan is this to come down, this to come down to más o menos that level there and then replace the window into the rock wall behind. Let's see how this goes. That's it. It's out. Yeah, it was literally just sat there, look. Yeah. Okay, so I've established this wall isn't very good. We've already discovered that with the other section of the wall. So Lillian's going to have a go at removing it. We're just using a small crowbar and just see what happens. It doesn't matter what damage is done to the floor because it's all gonna be concreted anyway. So, enjoy yourself. More likely frighten myself. Well, well, maybe so. Awesome. Just pull it. That was loud. Let's see what sort of lentil was holding this window up. <laughs> It'd be a look. Oh. Well, that's interesting. Awesome. Okay. And just like that, we have natural light coming in. How's that? <laughs> a bit gappy. No, 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 that's, that's an optical illusion. Oh, is it? Yeah, I well, reckon so. A, a bit like the way the lintel does that. <laughs> yeah, it does a bit. It's like a bendy banana. Banana lintel. Yeah. Woohoo! Yeah, you used to go along with our angry fuse box. Yes! It hasn't been fitted yet, so it's angry. <laughs> It just looks like a very unhappy face. Every time we look at this, that fuse box, it just looks like it's angry with us for not having fixed it yet. <laughs> having taken all of this wall down, it's really interesting to see the different block work, brick work, uh, rock work even. There, there, there. Can't really work out how the building originally was. Maybe that was originally a doorway? But then why is that different to that? Or it was built bigger over the years? Oops. Can't really gauge it, can't work it out. There isn't an obvious, this was a door. But very interesting. And also, that bit over there with a the plaster on it. Not 
No. So they're not modern. It's powdery. So things yeah. just layers and layers and layers of lime, lime wash paint. M maybe so, but why just that area and nowhere else? Don't know. Very, very interesting. And this is the window out from outside. Most of the time yesterday was spent replacing the marble that was here with these tiles. It probably doesn't look level, but I can assure you it is. You saw the shape of the banana lintel inside. It is level to the outside world. Whether it's level to this building is another kettle of fish. And it's a tilt and turn. So it can be opened. Hello. <laughs> or tilted just for ventilation, which is brilliant. Much better than a solid metal window that we had before. Well, what do you think to our new curtains? <laughs> Actually, what we've done is we've uh, got some expanding foam for ceiling doors and windows and put it on there and not being experts in expanding foam we perhaps expanding foamed a bit too much and it's dripping over the edge so I've just covered it in plastic keep it nice and clean for now can trim it off when it's nice and dry but yes otherwise da -da, look at our lovely new modern curtains oh yes actually it might be a work of art <laughs> it might look. be something I can't, I can't think of these what impressionist would have designed it but <laughs> I'm certainly an impressionist to somebody who knows what they're doing. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Right, I'm going to do a mix of NHL 5. Um, because we fitted the window and we fitted it all with sponge. And now it just the sponge really just needs protecting. We're nowhere near ready for plastering, but I don't want any insects burrowing into it. Um, so I'm going to do a mix of that. This is how we do it. Um, there's many other people out there doing it different ways but basically they're all the same we've been in conversation with two companies in the uk um of how to mix it and the best preparation and the best finished mix that we need to do the different projects that we want to do so it's really really important you must use the same measurements for everything so ideally you have a bucket that's the same for your sand and your and your cow don't add the water first because you can put too much in you can always add water but you can't take it away um, and if you can just keep adding and adding and adding until you get the mix you want you're not going to keep the correct ratios and it's the ratios that are important so we just do it in small batches so we have a little tiny small bucket and the, the mix that we use is three parts sand and one part lime cow um, and this time I'm also going to put in some fibres just for a little bit of extra bonding strength and strength in itself. So, <clears throat> this, is, this is the tiny little bucket that I use because it's just easier to measure. And do you know what? I can't even see how many litres it is anymore because we've used it that much and rubbed all the information off, but I think it's a five litre. So it'll be basically three of these, one of the cow and some fibres. Um, and I'll add the fibres to the bucket before adding the water to the bucket so they mix up well. You've got to make sure the fibres are mixed well. And what sort of quantity of fibres do you use? Well, I just use a, a small handful really because there isn't, doesn't seem to be a, a way that you measure it out. So I just use a small handful and we did, I did use a big handful once and you end up with just tufts and there's far too much. I think sometimes less is more in that respect because i don't you know it doesn't seem to make any difference but you do need to put some in and it needs to be a reasonable amount now in the bucket i'm going to put six liters of water which will be my starting point and if i need more water i can add more water so six liters and the, the fibers in and that because this is all really really dry that should actually do it for what we want um, from what we've used in the past and the same measurements we end up using between eight and nine liters of water for the size mix that I'm going to do anyway <clears throat> so it's 
three of this the sand put it in the mixer don't don't <clears throat> don't add the water to the mixer first Sound. One H and HL five. <coughs> And then I'll do another same, same again. So I've put in the the quantities of sand and NHL5 cal. As you can see, it's a darker colour. We uh, use a white NHL 2.5 for the for the final finish, and it ends up being white because we're using a white crushed marble sand. So I'll give this a mix for a short while, to, so it's all mixed up. And while I'm do, while it's mixing, then I'll sort the water out. That is about as much as you want. In fact, that probably is a little bit too much. Tiny, tiny little bit. These fibers are fine, really, really fine. So I just add some water in and give it a mix while that's mixing. It's important to mix the dry ingredients first so then you don't get any patches where it may not mix properly. Always mix dry first. Okay, so as you can see, it's mixing up nicely. All the dry ingredients are all mixing up. I've put the water in the bucket and that small handful of um, fibres has now created this like foamy mass. Uh, I did try using a, a stirring tool with a drill and it, it didn't work out for me very well. Um, maybe I was a little bit too mad with it. So I just now mix it by hand. Um, and then I'll put that in. Just the mixer, slightly higher, but as you can see, a small tiny bit ends up looking a bit like this, so you fix it up. Pour some in and let it start to mix, and then put a little bit more in. This water's still got loads of fibres sitting on the top. Um, okay, and then... And that's it, it'll splash about a little bit until it starts to mix, so you might want to stand back a little bit. At this point it always looks really really wet but you just give it time and it, it turns into the correct consistency doesn't it? Yeah, yeah it does uh, and sometimes you think no no that's too dry let it mix let it mix leave it for mix for five ten minutes and you'll get a better idea as you can see it's starting to dry a little bit more now um, and we'll come back to it in a few minutes. Okay, so this has been mixing for maybe five minutes? Yeah, yeah. And as you can see, it's coming together. It's getting more, um, what they call it, fatty. Um, I guess that's a, a term that I don't know, but I've, you know, from what I've done so far over the past six months to a, a year, this is about the right consistency that we want for what we're going to do. Um, if, you, if you make it too wet, it'll shrink and when it shrinks back the same as cement concrete you end up with cracks so you don't need it too wet 
if you want it to stay as a piece. Um, so the more water you add, the wetter the mix, and then the wetter the mix, the more it will shrink because that's what happens, the water evaporates and it all contracts. So do it as the right wetness for what you actually need to do. For what we need to do, we don't need it wet. So that's it. Wet. Okay, so this is 10 minutes later. As you can see, it's totally changed. Didn't add any more water or anything. You've just got to give it time. Um, and that's ready. It's all clumping together and as you can see, it's dropping now as a sticky sticky mass as much as it can. So we'll uh, get that put on where we need to put it on. Okay, so with the lime mixture, we're, this is going to all be filled now. We've dug it out and we've gone back to solid. We didn't actually end up digging out that much more. Um, so it's been wet twice and it's nice and damp now. It's holding the moisture. So uh, that's it. It'll get uh, back filled with cow now. It's not going to be a smooth finish because this is just the first coat. Exactly the same with using plaster. Mix, dobs it on, smooth it on. There you go. This is, as Chris said, the cowl at the five because we want this for strength, it's not for prettiness. So I'm not worrying about pretty, I just want to make this all nice and solid. That's it. I feel like an amoeba under a microscope or something. Ah. It's weird. Yes. sure plasterers would have a fit this is not the way to do it but it works for me and this is from the outside NHL 5 all put around now the manufacturers say not to get um, cement products or lime products actually on the window itself so this mess that's there once it's dry will be polished off so we don't wet damage the the cow that we've put up um, that's Loki coughing away as he normally does after he's stolen something random to chew on and it looks like it's uh, possibly an almond or maybe even an olive stone that dog is a flipping nutcase so anyway back to the window so this has all been done to protect the foam as I said and all this here needs fixing up and replastering but the priority was to protect the window this whole lot's got to be refurbished anyway so there's no point in in doing that bit right now thanks for watching the latest episode of tales from the caveside if you enjoy what we're doing please like and subscribe we would really appreciate it